Hello my little bubble fives. In this video is going to be my review on the new Jim Crow by Michelle Alexander. Guys, this book was so phenomenal. Now I didn't include this in my March wrap up because technically I didn't finish it in March. I just finished it yesterday which was the 3rd. Yes, I finished it April 3rd so this was my first book that I finished this month. And y'all, this book was so good like it was it's I, okay let me get my let me get my let me get my words together so i'm in a race with time with the sunlight because it's going to pour down tonight and it's really cloudy and stuff so try to hurry before it gets too dark um i really enjoyed this book this was just so good this was just such an informative book like it was one of those books that it's like reading it like it made you it brought it brought stuff into perspective for you like it made you realize like like it's like all it's like stuff you always paid attention to but you never just like sit down and thought about it like this made you just think about situations that go on every day that you know go on but it just made you really sit down and think about it y'all like okay this book was just so fucking informative like i learned things i didn't know things were brought to my attention that i did know and this book just made me want to tell, like, everybody what I now know. Like, y'all. It was just that good. Like, I really enjoyed this book. And I don't usually read, like, you know, like, I guess I would call this a nonfiction. I don't usually read, like, nonfiction, like, like with, like, issues like this. You know, I don't, I don't usually read books like this. But I've wanted to read this for a long time, um, ever since, you know, it was brought to my attention. Like, Guys, like, reading this, I did not know that originally, like, the war on drugs started when drug crime was on a decline. And then the war on drugs made drug crime come on the incline again. So it's like, it wasn't even an issue. It was just an excuse to, you know, the, the war on drugs wasn't even an issue to target, like, the real problem with drugs. It was just an issue to target you know, colored neighborhoods of African Americans and Latinos. Anybody that wasn't white and also like lower class um, white citizens, it was used to target them as well. And I was just like, damn, like I, I didn't even know that when it started that, you know, that was the thing. I didn't know that it was on a decline when it started. So that was something new for me to learn, definitely. And it also talks about how we are constantly put back in, in different racial caste systems like the second one is over they find someone finds a new reason to start a whole nother one but disguise it as something else that is supposed to be helping a situation but it's really making the situation worse it also talks about how in america we just automatically oh, arrest them and put them in jail and how other countries deal with the exact same issues that we're dealing with but they deal with it in a different in a different way like other countries will spend their funding for like drug crimes and stuff on rehab systems and you know getting people healthier versus just like throwing them in a cage which is what America spends all of their funding on is is jails and prisons so we're just going to throw them in jail and lock them up and throw away the key like and that's going to solve the issue that's going to reform them that's not how it works and other countries have proved that because they have a better a better rate doing that with these therapy sessions and all of these other programs that they put together like these non like threatening and non-violent programs that they put together to help these issues they're the same crimes we have are still increasing while they're doing that instead of just automatic throwing them in a jail and their crime um rates are decreasing and it pisses me off because they're always talking about how oh my god america is such a superpower and all of this yet other countries are making headway uh are making better headway better decisions than we are but we are supposed to be a fucking superpower where i think that needs to be redecided who i want to know who the hell decided that america was a superpower because apparently we're not because we can't even make good decisions for our citizens when other countries are making way better decisions and their um crime is on a decrease and ours is still on a rise because we're harassing it's pr police brutality and police harassment and trust me i'm not coming for the police so i'm not saying all police officers do this because they're not okay so, my fiance is a police officer. So, I mean, I think I have a really good unbiased opinion here. All police officers don't do this, but majority of them do. 
like a good bit of them do and like it's it's coming on a rise again in america and it's scary it's scary for a person of color to do anything like if you get pulled over it's like it, it's, it's you terrified that you're going to end up being on the news for one of those people that got shot for no reason you know so it's scary out there you know and hearing all of this and it's like oh my god like reading this and they have like in this book there are they tell like different like real stories of like the this like the stuff that is going on like um when they started doing the the prize searches they had this story about this woman she was 53 years old someone in the apartment building told them that someone was selling drugs on the sixth floor of this apartment building and she was the only one on the sixth floor and the person they had an informant that told them this and the informant was really wrong because the person that they say was selling drugs had been arrested four days prior to them doing this search and seizure or whatever and they weren't even there anymore but the police didn't call to verify they didn't go and verify any of this at all and they busted this woman apartment with flashbangs and she had a massive heart attack and died two hours later um they ruled her death a homicide but no one was brought up on charges for it so the lady just died and apparently it was no one's fault um it's like reading this book it is like it, it really does bring like a lot of stuff into perspective for you because it's like damn that's like really fucked up and they are, they were talking about how so many people get harassed by the police doing these like blind searches for drugs and they use like basic traffic stops just to search your car and you know you have the right to tell the police that you don't want them to search your car like i've seen this on a lot of videos the second the police pull you over they ask you if they can search your car and they made a valid point in this book. No one would tell the police no because then that makes you look suspicious and that causes more harassment from the police for you. So you have no drugs in the car. You can get pulled over and say you had you didn't make a turn. You didn't put your singles on a turn and they'll pull you over and ask you if it's okay for them to search your car. Like for what? Because I didn't put my signal on a turn so now I have drugs in the car. And they use these traffic stops as a reason to search your car for drugs. If you tell them no, they're going to ask you to get out of the car and they're going to call the dogs and they're going to search your car and if the dogs are alerted to anything then all of a sudden they have the right to search your car so even if you say no they're going to find a way to search it anyway which i think is bullshit and if you say no it automatically makes you look guilty like you have something in the car and i knew this you have the right to ask if you're being detained and if they tell you no you have the right to drive away but um no one would do it because then the, the it's going to be another excuse for them to add a, to add some kind of charge to you even though you're not in the wrong it's your basic right it's your right as a citizen to tell to ask if you're being detained and to drive away if you're not but they don't see it that way um this this book was just good like all the way around i loved all of the information i got in this i think that this should be a part of required reading for schools this is a book i think needs to be on the list because this talks about this is just true it is not saying it's not even throwing fingers that saying oh white people are racist it's not anything like that it's speaking the truth about how things are it gives you a little bit of history in the beginning and it comes up to current times and it's telling you what happens and your rights and what is going on in the world and I feel like this is something that needs to be on a required reading for schools, at least in high school. And I want to say at least in high school. This is something I think people should be required to read. This should be on a required reading list. This is something that people need to read about. And I know no one will pick it. Like no like high school person or like middle school child will pick this book up by themselves. This is something I think should be something like as a, a, a you should be reading as a class or something. But I think people need to read this. Like I recommend this to everyone of any age. Well, I'm gonna say anyway, any age, because like if you're too young, you're not going to really grasp onto it. Like, but you you understand what I'm saying? This is a, a really good book, and I think every, it pisses me off that this book doesn't get as much media attention as a lot of other books do. Like I really enjoy this book, and I would read. I would definitely, definitely, definitely like recommend that everyone read this like i really enjoyed my time reading this book and i want to go buy my own copy because i tried to um i tried to page flag this because there's some really good quotes in here and like just really good points that i wanted to keep but this book is just so much up. it's a library book it's like so like worn 
they won't even stick. Like I put them in and they fall out. So I want to get, and I wanted to like, y'all, I have never wanted to highlight in the book so much in my life. Like I want to get my own copy and it's going, it's like, it's not going nowhere. Like I wanted to highlight so much stuff in here. I have to get my own copy. Like I'm definitely going to buy my own copy and I'm going to reread this and I'm going to like page flag and highlight in here. Like this book just made so many good points. And um, I put my bookmark in here because there's a quote that I want to read in here. Where it's, it's yeah, it's a quote. Uh, it's a quote that I want to read in here, and it's the it's at the very end of the book. And I just feel like it made a really really good point, and I really want to read it to you guys because it made a really good point for me. And at this point in the video, I'm pretty sure it's dark as shit because the sun has definitely like set. So uh, wait, give me a minute. Maybe if I turn the light on, it might it might look better. I don't, I definitely don't know how better this look, it might look, it might look worse, like it might not, but we gonna roll with it tonight. Um, this is a quote from a letter that James Baldwin wrote to his nephew in 1962, and it was published in um, one of his books called The Fire Next Time, and this is the quote. <laughs> This is the crime of which I accuse my country and my countrymen, and for which neither I nor time nor history will ever forgive them that they have destroyed and are, and are destroying hundreds of thousands of lives and do not know it and do not want to know it. It is their innocence which constitutes the crime. This innocent country set you down in the ghetto in which in fact it intended that you should perish. The limits of your ambition were thus expected to be set forever. You were born into a society which spelled out the brutal clarity in as many ways as possible that you were a worthless human being. You were not expected to aspire to excellence. You were expected to make peace with mediocrity. You have, and many of us have, defeated this intention. And by a terrible law, a terrible paradox, those innocents who believe that your imprisonment made them safe are losing their grasp on reality. But these men are your brothers, your lost younger brothers, and if the word integration means anything, this is what it means. That we will love, shall force our brothers to see themselves as they are, to cease fleeing from reality and begin to change it. But this is your home, my friend. Do not be driven from it. Great men have done great things here and will again, and we can make America what it must become. It will be hard, but you come from, start, but you come from sturdy peasant stock. Men who picked cotton and dammed rivers and built railroads and in the teeth of the most terrifying odds achieved an unassailable and, monument and monumental dignity. You come from a long line of great poets since Homer. One of them said, the very time I thought I was lost, my dungeon shook and my chains fell off. We cannot be free until they are free. God bless you and Godspeed. Y'all, when I read that at the end, I was like, what a fucking amazing way to end this book off. Like, after I read this last night, I was just like, <clears throat> I was like, damn, this book is good. Like, I need to get my own copy and I'm going to make my fiance read it, which is a probably taking forever to read it because he takes so long to read a book. Like, I... I swear to y'all, he has been reading Glass Sword for like a year now. But it's not that he's a slow reader. He just doesn't read as often. Like if he read today, he won't read for maybe like two or three more weeks. Okay? That's just how that's how he operates, so whatever. But y'all, this book was amazing. Like I really recommend this to everybody. I really want y'all to pick this book up and tell me what y'all think about it. Like seriously. This book was so good. Like this book did everything for me. Okay? everything everything for me all right like y'all gotta pick this up like promise me like y'all would pick this up and read this okay it took it definitely took me longer to read this than i thought it would i started reading this at the end of february but that was my own fault okay like i read this book like really slow and i probably should have read it by itself because then i probably would have got through it a whole lot faster but i read it with like other books as y'all can see all the books i read in march i read it with other books but y'all this book was so amazing and i really love this book and i really want you guys to try this out and comment below with y'all videos i review and tell me what you guys think about this and that's all I have for y'all today, okay? So promise me that y'all read this. This is a library book, so it's at y'all libraries. Like, go pick it up, and I hope y'all library had it. But y'all should definitely go and try and check it out from the library at least. I think it's only 10 or $11 on Amazon if you guys want to go buy it, the paperback version anyway. And, oh my God, thank you guys so much for watching my video. 
don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.